Hello, this is Mash It and Smash It, but you can call me Mash or Mash It for short. Let's talk about early animated movies, shall we? I've spent the last handful of weeks watching and reviewing some of the biggest pioneers in animated films. From Disney, to Fleischer, to Reiniger, to Sterovich, to Patushko, these artists all had a hand in creating some of the most important milestones that have led to years of some of the greatest, yet underappreciated, movies of all time. As we enter the 1940s on our journey through animated film history, we will start to see the influence of the movies I've reviewed so far take effect. Some movies will be huge successes, others probably not. But one thing that will be clear through all of these works is that thanks to the five movies I've looked at over the last few weeks, animated movies have been proven to not only be a promising art form, but also a promising business. The word that pretty much sums up this era I have covered is important. While I can't say that I will watch all of these movies every chance I get, it still doesn't change just how groundbreaking they all were. Aside from that, they were all fun experiences, thanks in no small part to their animation. But which of these movies was the best? Well, if you've been watching my previous videos and have been paying close enough attention, you probably already have a good idea how this list is going to go. But regardless, let's take one last look at these movies I've reviewed and decide how I would rank them based on overall quality. Now just a quick note, I am only ranking the movies I was actually able to find, as in surviving movies that are available to watch. I don't know where Adventures of Pinocchio, Four Musketeers, Seven Ravens, or any of the Christiani movies would rank had I been able to see any of them. Maybe they would all rank among the ones I've seen, or maybe my top five movies of this era really are the top five. Either way, I can't evaluate a movie if I can't even watch it. So let's not waste any more time. These are the top five available pre-1940s animated movies. Boy, that's a mouthful. Number 5. The New Gulliver. I feel kind of bad putting this at the bottom of the list, as it is probably the one out of all of these entries to have the most work put into it. But for all the things this movie excels at, it's not without its issues, particularly with the squeaky audio. I mean, I get it, the people of Lilliput are tiny. You don't have to convey that point with how they sound. The other Gulliver movie didn't have to resort to that. Maybe with one or two characters, but I can stand listening to them. On top of that, the animation, while still very impressive, is not always the most pleasant to look at. But I'm not here to dwell on the movie's problems, as this list is about the positive aspects of these films. It's still a fun experience, complete with the catharsis of watching a child stand up to an entire oppressive society and being big enough to defeat them no problem. But there's also still plenty of suspense, particularly with the plans that the villains cook up, making it all the more satisfying when they're overthrown. The characters, while relatively flat, all do their job, and I quite enjoy the music as well. Hell, I'd even say that the opera number isn't half bad if it wasn't so high-pitched. This is still a good movie, and a very important pioneer for stop motion. It's just not the easiest on the senses. Oh yeah, and let's not forget the communist undertones. In Soviet Russia, animated movie watch you! I still recommend this movie, but I'm a little more of a fan of the Fleischer version of Gulliver's Travels. Number 4 Gulliver's Travels Yeah, the Gulliver movies were the only ones so far to get a 7 out of 10 instead of an 8, so of course they're at the bottom of the list. Like the last entry, there are factors that hold this back from getting an 8, the main one here being the rush production schedule. But again, I'm here to talk about what did work, and the main factor that made this movie such an enjoyable experience was the comedy. Whether the comedy is performed by Gabby, the spies, or the two kings, it's what really brings this movie to life. And even the story itself is fairly enjoyable, even if it includes one of the blandest romantic couples in cinema history. So I guess I can at least say that they've likely known each other longer than Snow White and Prince What's-His-Name have. Even Gulliver himself makes up for what little personality he has with his overall performance. Seriously, I could listen to that voice all day. 
I might have been a little hard on some of the more technical aspects of this movie in my full review, as again, while it was piggybacking off the Snow White success, it still managed to be its own thing. It's still not as good as its rival, at least in my opinion, your mileage may vary, but it didn't have to be. For many years, nobody was even able to touch Disney's success, so it's impressive that Fleischer Studios was even able to step up to bat. In the end, this is still a fun experience, and if you're a fan of classic animation, I highly recommend it. Number 3. The Tale of the Fox. Looking back, this really is some of the best stop-motion animation I've seen. The likes of Rankin Bass can never even hope to reach this level of quality. The titular fox is incredibly unconventional as far as protagonists go. Much of the time I was wondering if I should even root for him. But the lengths he goes to in order to get himself out of a bad situation is nothing short of amusing, and in the end, you accept that this is all just a dark comedy with a little bit of social commentary thrown in at the end. Not much else to say other than that this is a really entertaining movie. Check it out, assuming you can find it anywhere, because it looks like the creator's family won't let you watch it for free. Number 2. The Adventures of Prince Ahmed. What can I say? Lotta Reiniger is a master of her craft. While not everything about this movie is held up perfectly, it's not enough to upset the overall experience, and said experience only needs one factor to help it out, and that's the animation. The animation makes this movie. Not only is it a unique style, but everything is just so carefully crafted, and Reiniger knows how to convey emotions without even showing the characters' faces. On top of that, this just feels like the most epic movie out of all the ones I've looked at for this series. While the story may be basic, the adventure itself is thrilling, and takes a few unexpected directions. This is a movie that deserves to be seen by more people, so if this looks like your kind of thing, I implore you to check it out. You will be doing a great service to the work of a great animator. And the number one best animated movie before the 1940s is... Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, I know, predictable choice. But what else could I have picked? This is the movie that showed how far animation can go. And out of all the movies I've looked at from this era, this one felt the most alive, thanks in no small part to the characters like the dwarfs. It had great comedy, great scares, a strong villain for the time, and even a few sad moments. This movie has the whole package. Are there some dated aspects to it? Sure. But I'd say that the animation, as well as the overall experience, still hold up immensely well. This movie came very close to a 9 out of 10 for me, but knowing how much great animated films would only get better over the years, I couldn't give it any higher than an 8. But it is a very high 8. Walt Disney truly was a genius. An evil genius, but still a genius. He had a vision, and that vision became a series of legendary animations even well after he passed away. Or froze himself under Disneyland, I don't know. I look forward to looking back at the works that evolved from this one movie that set his legendary studio in motion. And no matter how much better some of the later Disney films may be, they all have Snow White to thank. Without it, animated films might not be nearly as big as they are today. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the fairest of them all before 1940. And that is my list. Now, I'm going to be taking a few weeks off from this series to work on a few other projects, but I will be back soon and we shall then begin the 1940s. I noticed how many animated films came out in that decade, so I might soon see some movies that do not measure up to the ones I've reviewed so far. In fact, this decade is probably going to suck right off the bat. My expectations are so low. Anyway, this is Mash It and Smash It, signing off.